Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. I'm your host, Vaughn Troidy, and I am the Steampunk Desperado. And I am Arlos Holloway, Mrs. Desperado. Yes, and today we are, are reviewing a wonderful steampunk animation. A lot of people aren't aware of it, so we're hoping that, that more people will be. And it is called... April and the Extraordinary World. And that was, uh, that was released in... Uh, 2015, that's what that says yes, right there. Yes, right, right. It's, uh, <laughs> and it's, it was in French. It was, it was done uh, by creators from France, uh, Belgium, and Canada, and released by Studio Canal in France, and um, directed by, and I'm probably going to slaughter these names, Christian Damar, Frank Kinsey, and the screenplay was also by Frank and Kinsey, and Benjamin Legrand. Um, I would have liked to have seen it in French, or heard it in French, because you see it the way it is. Yes. But, uh, we saw the dubbed version on Netflix. Right. And it was actually, it was good. It was it was very good. It's very charming. Yeah, we, we always prefer to see the original language, because it, you just lose something when, when it's dubbed. I mean, you lose kind of the original intent, and then, because uh, you have to kind of match the words to the character's mouth movements. But uh, this is this is a very interesting and creative uh story. It's like I said, it was an alternate history, and the French word is Avril et le monde truqué, which means the twisted world, which I thought was I thought that was okay, a cooler title. Yeah, better yeah, and you can tell it's twisted because on the on the movie poster there are two Eiffel Towers right next to each other. And uh, it starts out in the late 1800s with uh, Emperor Napoleon coming in looking coming into this laboratory uh, looking for the super soldier, this, this, the Franklin family is supposed to develop this, this stuff for them in the lab. And instead, they've got giant lizards. They have lizards. Yeah. And then he's like, what? You know, lizards? I didn't ask for lizards. I asked for super soldiers. So he, he gets out his gun and he's trying to shoot the lizards. <laughs> and they escape. And yes. They escape and uh, somehow, I think he, if I remember correctly, his bullets hit something explosive and the whole lab blows up. And Napoleon is killed, which uh, tells you it's a alternate history. And anyway, after that and the two Alpha yeah, Towers, that and the two Alpha Towers, yeah. So after that, uh, what happens? The um, scientists go missing. Yeah, all the one by one scientists. Yeah, are abducted. All the famous scientists, scientists, guys like Einstein and Fermi, and they're just they're disappearing one after another. And uh, because all the scientists are gone the world stops advancing in technology. They, they basically stay in the age of steam and they're like burning coal and they're burning wood and this place is really polluted. And so, so anyway, that's, that's how, how the story opens, I believe, in the 30s. At the opening, France is looking for the scientists for, for create more weapons, yeah, for weapons. And the Franklin family doesn't, doesn't like that idea. Instead, they've been working on this longevity serum uh, they figure if mankind is, is healthier, then the world will be more peaceful and stuff. Uh, but so they they escape. They they're running away from the government. And there's this one inspector. He's kind of comical. You know, they always have to have a comical inspector, especially in the French movie. And he's like kind of kind of like Clouseau. You know, <laughs> he's chasing these these parent scientists scientists, and they're they're parents of April. You know, the title character. But uh, then what happens to the parents? What, what, what gets and, them? Well, it's a very strange um, part of the movie because you, you don't really know. But um, they're all fleeing from the inspector and his goons. And um, she and her cat, Darwin, um, you... jump on an air balloon. And then you don't really know what happens to them. But there's like a lightning bolt. And the, it's the assumption that they're killed. So the only thing she escapes with is Darwin, her cat, and a globe, uh, one of the snow globes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what's it, what's unusual about Darwin? Darwin, her cat, can talk, and um, it's very clever. He has a great personality. He's he's um, uh, he's very funny um, and kind. Of, it's almost like her conscience, if you if you if you will. Jimmy Cricket. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but it's cat, and so he encourages her when she needs that, and he also chides her or scolds her when he feels that she's being a little bit um, dangerous or yeah or, or she's doing something she shouldn't. So it's almost like her conscience. It's it's a very clever uh, plot device, and it's um, and it, right. and it re really. Uh, makes it very human. So, um, ten years go by, and Darwin being cat, he's gotten pretty old. But um, she, uh, you know, April's very frustrated, and she breaks the snow globe, and it turns out that the serum is inside the snow globe. Dun dun dun. And so, uh, and she gives this this serum to to the cat, and he becomes young again. And so, so that's. That solves that problem. So then they have to go about recreating it. Yeah. So while this is all going on, she meets a young, um, kind of a thief and a ruffian who is was paid to find her. Julius. Exactly. Yeah, Julius. And yeah. that seems to all, also be probably a very common um, also plot device that you have someone who who is supposed to be finding her, but then becomes her friend yes. eventually. Um, right, yeah. So we won't tie the end. Yeah, he's supposed but, to be helping uh, Pizzoni find yes. her. Yes. The, the comical inspector. Yeah. So it's it's beautiful. Um, yeah. Again, I, I have to say right. um, that it's um, the action parts um, are very well done. They're very well scripted. They're very mm -hmm. well blocked. Um, so it has action. It's got a little romance. It's got this talking cat. Yes. Um, uh, and all these wonderful steam engines that are, uh, and steam devices that are all around. The, the, the art style is, yeah, the art style is very interesting too because it's not, you know, we're used to American animation and Japanese animation and the characters are usually kind of cute. These characters look a little different. I mean, they're, yeah. not, they're not so cutesy. I mean, they have kind of a very, like April has a very Eastern European, mm -hmm. perhaps Jewish look. I mean, she doesn't look... She doesn't look like a little blonde. No. Blonde. Uh, no. Lolly. No. Uh, no. Uh, definitely a little bit more realistic, if yeah. you will. Yeah. Um, I I saw it as think Disney 101 Dalmatians. You might call it a little bit a little bit feminist because they have these female scientists. April's mother is very smart scientist. April's a scientist too, and but it's not over heavy handed. You know, it's not. And, and there's a little bit of a war between the sexes in later on with the, the mysterious forces that are conspiring that can have all these scientists. But we don't want to really want to give it away who they are. It's interesting who they turn out to be. And so, like I said, we saw this on Netflix and, and we think it deserves more attention. The French version, April is a famous actress, I, 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 I'm told, from Marie Cotillard and English. English actors, they had some big names in there, like Paul Giamatti and Susan Sarandon, uh, were in the English vo version of the voice actors. And this did receive some awards, uh, Best fe Feature Films, at the An Annecy International Film Festival in, in Annecy, France. And it was also um, a runner-up at the San Diego Critics Award. As far as our rating, um, it, we thought it was very charming and original. And, uh, and because of that, and it was so, so delightful, uh, we gave it the perfect score of, of five years. And so, so we hope you'll see it, because you, people really need to see these, these kind of obscure works and bring them into the mainstream so we can have more great uh, oh. steampunk uh, fiction. We hope you will like and subscribe and come back and see more reviews of steampunk goodness. And also, I'm going to start doing other, maybe some other short videos uh, the, other than reviews, I've got some cool, some cool little gizmos to talk about, and so on, steampunk crafts, perhaps. So come, come back for that. And what have you seen that you'd like us to review? It could be live action, could be anime. Comment below. Yes, we very much appreciate it. So for now, this is Vaughn Trudy, the steampunk desperado, and Arliss Holloway, Mrs. Desperado, saying adios from the steampunk desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. Okay.